Good morning, my friends, and welcome to the Downtown Church's online worship. We are so glad you've joined us this morning. As always, you can reach out to us by calling the church and leaving a voicemail, or you can send an email to hello at the downtown.church as we're checking both of those regularly. You know, they say absence makes the heart grow fonder, and as this pandemic wears on, that's becoming so true for how some of you are probably feeling towards your barber or hairstylist, your favorite restaurant, or even those donut holes on Sunday mornings. And it is absolutely true for how we so miss seeing you all on Sunday mornings. And like most of you, we are paying attention to the news as things begin to reopen, and we will be sure to let you know of any plans we have as soon as possible. But for now, we're just thankful for this time that we can gather together, even if only online, to worship and sing and pray. And let's lift our voices this morning. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. adore thee casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee which wert and art and evermore shall be Please remember that you're welcome to give any prayer requests for our prayer team or for me personally at Lori at the downtown.church. If there's any updates you could give us, so I'd be happy to receive those as well. Beginning next week, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, I'm going to have some office hours at the downtown church. If you'd like to schedule some time to meet with me, socially distancing, of course, and very safely. I would invite you again to contact me at lori at the downtown.church that we might schedule that time together. Now let us sing with the band and go to the Lord in prayer. When peace like a river
sky, not the grave, is our goal. Oh, trump of the angel, oh, voice of the Lord, blessed hope, blessed It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well. with my soul it is well it is well with my soul creator god who put the stars in the sky and the world into motion who with a word separates the sea from dry land and with merely command brings forth life. You and you alone are worthy of our praise. We worship you. We confess we feel like the psalmist who in one breath cries out, How long, O Lord? And the next give thanks that your timing is not like ours. In one moment we are sure of who you are and our place in this world. And the next our doubts assail us and we lose ourselves in fear. We bring ourselves to you knowing you will welcome us, hold us, forgive us. We worship and remember with thanksgiving that though we doubt, you are faithful. Though we are impatient and demanding, you are infinitely patient and merciful. And though we draw lines and build walls, you will make a way for your goodness and love to flow. We come once again asking for your blessing and grace to fall upon the people throughout the world who are stepping up and out to care for others. They are delivering packages and separating human cells. They are caring for ventilators and holding hands of dying people. They are too numerous to count, but you know them by name. Almighty One, Bring your spirit of peace into homes and relationships. Help us to speak words of kindness and compassion to one another, remembering always to love. Guide us by the power of your Holy Spirit into behaviors that give honor to you and to your Son. Help us to spend this day well, that when the day turns to night and we rest from our labors, you are pleased with us. Unite us, Holy Spirit, as together we pray the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. You are the rock on which I stand by your grace. It is well, my hope is sure. Christ my Savior
It is well, it is well with my soul. Good morning, everyone. It's Julie and Josh, and today we're in our backyard. Um, we've got some special friends with us today, our dogs, Max and Molly. Can you say hi? Say hi. Hi, hey guys. <laughs> we miss seeing everyone at church, but we're very thankful that we can stay connected and still worship together during this time. So Lori asked us to share with you today how we are following Jesus during this very unusual time that we are all living in. For us, we spend a lot of time in prayer, worshiping through online church, uh, and then sharing devotions uh, in our Jesus Calling devotional. We're both working from home right now, but every day we try to take a break from our new routine and we try to set time aside to get out of the house and go for a walk or a bike ride together with our dogs in our neighborhood. Have you been spending lots of extra time outside lately? For us, we find peace and comfort and we feel close to God when we're enjoying the beauty and nature that he has created. We admire beautiful flowers, birds, and other wild animals bunny rabbits and squirrels are our dog's favorite. We enjoy fresh air, the clouds, the breeze, the sun on our skin, all while enjoying the extra quality time that we've been given together. We're continually reminded of the Lord's promises and goodness. During this time, when everything is out of your normal routine, it can feel kind of scary and unknown. But no matter what we face, we have God. He is always there. We have his peace that he gave us, and we can focus our thoughts on that peace. Can you share with us where you've seen God throughout your week? That's so great. We encourage you to continue to look for God's beauty and presence every day. Will you please pray with us? Dear God, thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for giving us reminders that you are with us. Thank you for loving us. Help us feel your peace and follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See you guys. Bye. I'm going to say something that I hesitate to admit. I'm the pastor of the downtown church and considered by some in our denomination to be a leader. I'm a daughter, a wife, a mom, a grandmother who wants to be a matriarch. I thought I was doing pretty doggone well with the pandemic, making adjustments, learning how to preach to a camera, Zoom meetings and hangouts. I mean, I'm in my mid-60s, and I have had other obstacles and challenges in my life. Too many surgeries, cancer, the death of loved ones. I'm still standing as a faithful follower of Jesus, writing messages, trying each day to live more and more loving God and loving neighbor. I'm not a frontline person. I got this. Then Friday... April 24th happened, and I hesitate to tell you this because it may change your opinion of me, but here goes. That night, I hit an emotional and spiritual wall, head first. I still had the headache to prove it. I walked into what felt like a huge brick wall appearing out of nowhere in my living room. If there had been graffiti on it, it would have said enough, stop. Fear, anxiety, grief. I would like to tell you that I got down on my knees, prayed, and suddenly everything changed. But that's not true. The longer I looked at the wall, the bigger and higher it grew. The bricks became blocks, the lettering on it larger, and I felt smaller, unable to climb it. I went to bed in tears that night, and with the dawn of a new day, I began to remember what I knew to be true. Things I knew in my head, even if I could not feel them in my heart. Things I had spent time learning, studying, practicing, and living. The way to follow Jesus Christ. And this is what our message series is all about. 
choosing to follow the one who transforms our lives, changes our behavior, heals the world, and helps us to dismantle the walls we build. It is about setting the Holy Spirit loose so that we might connect to God and one another. The Holy Spirit who teaches, reminds, guides, and speaks into our lives. I would like to tell you I have never hit a wall like that before or assure you I will never hit it again, but that would not be true. The truth is life brings us walls and challenges our faith which in turn challenges our words and behaviors. And another truth is this, the best use of our time is developing and nurturing those practices to become more prepared to meet challenges as we follow Jesus. We talked last week about our first practice, worship. This week we will add another practice to following Jesus, the study of Holy Scripture. This is how we learn to know the voice of our Lord and follow him. To know what God sounds like, we must first know the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as revealed in the Gospels. The most definitive way in which God has revealed God's self is in Jesus, the Word made flesh who lived among us. Adam Hamilton writes, when God sought to speak to the human race to disclose who God is and who God calls us to be, he did not send a book. He sent a person. All other words ever spoken or written about God are to be interpreted and understood in light of this one word, Jesus. We start with Jesus, but we don't stop there. We've been given the whole of the Bible we spend time learning about God from all of Holy Scripture. Hamilton again. Scripture records what the biblical authors heard God saying to them as they listened to the Spirit. It is the testimony and reflections of God's people concerning their experiences of God's deliverance, God's discipline, God's grace, and God's will. It is the primary witness we have to God's word that became flesh in Jesus Christ. As we read it, illumined by the Spirit, we hear God speak through it. So we study, study. Even the word sounds demanding. It sounds too much like something no one really wants to do. I know teachers are finding it challenging to get students to learn new things when learning is all online. You don't have to show up and no grades are attached. Who wants to study? Yet studying Holy Scripture has everything to do with how we navigate life, how we love God and love neighbors and deal with the big, giant brick walls in our life. So we study. Richard Foster, in his classical book, Spiritual Disciplines, writes about the difficulty we all have for studying scripture. I have discovered that the most difficult problem is not finding time, but convincing myself that this is important enough to set time aside. Yet hear these words from the Apostle Paul in his second letter to Timothy. I find them very convincing. There's nothing like the written word of God for showing you the way to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Every part of scripture is God-breathed and useful one way or another, showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, training us to live God's way. Through the word, we are putting together and shaped up for the task God has for us. So we study. Humbly, we come to learn not to prove something to ourselves or others. Foster writes, studying demands humility, willing to be subject to the subject matter, come as a student, not as a teacher. Too often we are intimidated by scripture, so we shy away from it. We believe there's a basic level of knowledge we need to have, and we don't have it. 
Maybe we tried before and it was just too overwhelming. Or someone said the only way to read it was all the way through. So we did okay when we started with Genesis, but stopped at the rules at Leviticus and the numbers and numbers and never returned to it. It's time to come again as a student, just as you are. Find a Bible translation that makes sense to you. An easy way to explore a translation is to use Bible Gateway or Version. Both are free and you can read from several different translations. Our Pew Bible is a new revised standard. The one we give away are new international versions. I often read the message as I just did a moment ago. It's a modern interpretation. I find it insightful. Think about getting a study Bible or use online resources to check out maps. See the places you're reading about today. Learn the context of the time the words were written. Learn from a timeline of what was going on in the world. Who was marginalized? Who was in power? What were the cultural norms? And remember, we are not studying just to gain more information. It is knowledge about God we seek. We are students of the living God whose words are a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. How do I know that? I read it, studied it, learned it, and I experienced its truth, which changes my life. As we study, we need to ask, what does this mean for the way I relate to God's people? What does this tell me about the character of God and how to grow in love for God and my neighbor? And we need to be brave enough to ask for the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth about ourselves, how we can tackle the problems around us, how we can change, how we, by the power of the Holy Spirit, can tear down walls. Start simply. Hamilton suggests five verses a day. Begin with a gospel, or you might even start with Exodus. We're going to be exploring the story of Moses in our next series, so you could get started early. When you hit Leviticus, you might jump to Psalms. When you're ready, go to five chapters a week. Five verses leads to five chapters, and all of a sudden, you are studying. Pray, ponder, explore, ask questions of the text. Mostly listen to the murmur of the Holy Spirit in your heart. Let the Spirit teach, remind, guide, and speak within you for the days, weeks, and years ahead. So we study. There are words of scripture I have memorized. Others I've read so often they feel like they're part of me. They have told me about who God is. They've taught me how to cry out in suffering and the healing that comes when I do so. They've given me words for my feelings, hopes, hurts. They've shown me how cruel humanity can be and to find hope in the midst of it all because God still comes. They have spoken to my heart as I shared the anguish of a mother watching her son die on the cross in the incredible power of the resurrection. They have taught me I am the beloved child of the Most High God. There is no more important book in my life than the Bible. When I hit that wall on April 24th, I needed the Holy Spirit to remind me of what I had learned over the years, and it did. It murmured into my soul these words. Sorrow may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Psalm 35. I will fear no evil for you are with me. Psalm 23. I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. John 10. My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, no testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful 
and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength, but with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. 1 Corinthians 10. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Philippians 4. As Saturday passed, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and I dismantled the wall together, brick by brick, verse by verse, prayer by prayer. So we study. Let us pray. Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for the power of Holy Scripture. Thank you for your Son, the Word made flesh who lived among us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit to teach us. Thank you that when we feel caught behind a wall, you will help us tear them down. When we think there is no way, you part the seas. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let us sing. We bury dreams, lay them deep into the earth behind the sand. Our goodbyes at the grave, but everything reminds us God knows we ache when He asks us to go on. How do we go on? We will see. Thank you.